Well, hello there. It's me, Historian Craig from MBS History. And you know what? I've been on YouTube for about two years now, and let's just say I get a lot of comments, whether it's on Reddit or YouTube itself, and some of them are pretty mean. And you know, it's the COVID outbreak right now. I'm looking for, you know, interesting episode ideas and something on the fly, and I thought to myself, why not disclose some of the very best mean or stupid comments I've received over the past two years? to you, the audience. So here is 10 genres of mean comments I've received. Because I couldn't just limit it to 10 comments. I kind of had to dig a little bit deeper and have a few comments per genre. You'll see what I mean soon. And of course, number one is on what I call the Alexander the Great Bros. So if you've ever watched my stuff, you would know that my first episode was on Alexander the Great. It's a history channel. Why wouldn't you do Alexander the Great? He's one of the greatest figures in history, no pun intended. Unfortunately, my episode was actually on him not being so great. You see, if you've taken your classics or your ancient history course, courses at that rate, you come to realize Alexander the Great is a man with a lot of character flaws. You know, whether it be him getting drunk and destroying the Propolis, or him getting drunk and killing his friend Cletus the Black, him dying of alcoholism, potentially, and him going on these benders where he would cry in a tent for days on end because his men wouldn't do what he wanted them to. Uh, you know, he was uh, a man of a few flaws, let's say. So, like any real textbook, you know, I just made an episode to highlight some of those flaws. I never said he wasn't great. In fact, I say it multiple times that I think he's great because it would be suicide to say he's not great. He's Alexander the Great. So let's just hear a few of the comments I got. And these are light ones. We're just softballing right now. What are you? A Persian moron? Alexander was the greatest. What the hell do you know? How can you say Alexander is not great and call yourself a historian? These are all lies. Anti-Greek propaganda. Alexander was the greatest. You know, like I said again, I never said he wasn't great. If you actually watch the videos, I, I say it multiple times, but I, I figure a lot of these people are just looking at the thumbnail. Number two, alcoholic beverages in my videos. So if you've seen some of my videos, a lot of the initial ones, you might have noticed, I don't know, something is going on here. To get to the point, I guess I'll read some of these quotes I received over uh, the first year or so. What's with the wine? You don't need a moniker. I don't know about that glass of wine. Either drink it or lose the prop. Looks tacky and forced. Sound needs work. But all in all, I'm already a fan. Thank you. Not drunk enough history. It's actually pretty catchy. Should have had that as a playlist. Lol, he is so drunk. The drink could have been left out. Here's my personal favorite. You look like an arrogant cunt with that glass. Hmm. I don't know what they're talking about, and I don't care. Number three, narration. So usually, I get a lot of comments about poor narration. It is indeed my fault. I, I would admit I'm, I'm terrible. I'm a better researcher. I didn't want to be the guy in front of the camera. I do all my research, it goes without saying. And I made one episode in particular called The Battle of Midway. You might have heard of it. Let's just say I didn't do an outstanding job. And let's read some of the quotes about my narration. Couldn't get past December the 7th because of narrator's voice. The narration is terrible. I'd guess it was a machine process voice, weird pronunciations, odd pauses, missing articles, etc. Could have been a machine reading a Wikipedia article. Like... I, I get I, I, I get I sounded bad, but I sound like a machine, like Microsoft Sam. I didn't, this is a little weird, this one. Interesting info, but please improve your audio quality. It was pretty grating. I could hear every noise from your mouth made between words. Yeah, I guess I do that a lot. I guess I smack my lips or something. Ah, oh, there you go. Try not to smack your lips during the presentation. All right, <laughs> it goes without saying. And last but not least, this guy was a horrible narrator. Duly noted, will improve. Number four, mispronunciation. 
So on a similar note to my old narration issue, uh, I mispronunciate names, places, events, and everything you could imagine. It's quite terrible. So let's go through the uh, hard, hard, the hardest list I had to make. Honestly, I had to pitch this down to about six. First one, it's Bombadil, not Bambadil. Honestly, I haven't gone back to look at the video, but I'm sure I did not say Bambadil. And if I did, shoot me. It's awful. Tom Babadil. Tunaville? Tunavile. Killing me. Nice history lesson, but a majority of all Russian pronunciation was butchered. Just stick to normal English for the next time. Hi, sorry, but when you got to the female snipers, you completely butchered the name of the first one, Ludmilia Pavlinichekko. I probably butchered that again, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Russian people, Russian audience. 746, sludge. What? Maybe I said sludge instead of sludge, but I don't think I said it all the time. I'll have to go back and check that one, so I'm not taking that Sludge. One. It's not Pella Lulu, it's Pellalu. Pronounced Pellalu. Wow, if I actually said that, my god, I'm an idiot. <laughs> oh. oh, and here's one that my editor particularly gives me uh, shit for all the time. It's Cavalry, not Calvary. I know, I keep messing that one up and I don't know why. I'm also dyslexic. You've probably seen one uh, in my Battle of Midway, I referred to some of the B-25s as B-52s. Honestly, I don't know how I did that. I'm just dyslexic, I guess. Number six, again, another similar topic, shitty audio quality. Uh, so for a long time, I used uh, this magnificent microphone that I'll try and find a picture of. Uh, it's, it was state of the art, of course, and it provided very pleasurable noises. It was awful, and I do apologize, but as you can see, I have a good microphone now. It's at least decent. So let's read some of these quotes. Holy white noise, Batman. Commentary only comes from the right headphone, because I didn't have it on stereo properly. Ugh. Very informative, but FYI, you might want to get a better microphone. Interesting info, but please improve your audio quality. It was pretty grating, and I could hear every noise your mouth made between words. Again, I guess I'm smacking my word. I'll try not when I talk. I must be. I'm an idiot. Number seven, my favorite one. Extremely racist and messed up comments. Now, I'm not gonna sit here like some SJW warrior. I'm definitely not one. I, I'm anything but that. But I made some episodes and I got some unbelievably disgusting and racist comments, not towards myself, but towards the content. So here's an example. I made an episode on the Pacific War. Specifically, I was doing an episode on American atrocities during the Pacific War, uh, them taking human trophies. So that would be uh, American Marines taking Japanese skulls, teeth, uh, even hands. Uh, and packaging it home to their loved ones. And before you think this is kind of a, a small issue, no, this happened on a pretty large scale. Uh, there was a lot of this coming in, and it made Time Magazine. Well, look at that picture, it says it all. Anyways, purpose of the episode was just to disclose facts. This was something that occurred, and not a lot of people know about it. I never said uh, it was a competition. I never said Americans were more atrocious than anyone else. I even say in the episode that I think the Japanese were responsible for the worst atrocities of World War II and, you know, they top 10 list. Probably the Japanese make top three, at least in the world, for atrocities. Yet people, for whatever reason, thought this was some kind of competition. They thought I was just taking a bite out of America and saying all sorts of things that I wasn't. You know, they put a lot of things in my mouth. And I got a lot of mean comments. I'm going to read a few of the mean ones, but I'm not going to get to the really bad ones that I had to delete. So, starting off. Those Japs deserved everything they got. They did a hell of a lot worse. Eh, kind of agree. It's a little mean though. Well, that's war for you. I would do the same thing. Those who commit war crimes deserve war crimes. That's not true. Any civilized people should not perform war crimes. That's why they're called war crimes. Despite if the enemy does them or not, you should not respond doing so. What I meant was taking trophies is normal because we were pissed just to be out there, and it was our way of saying screw you to the enemy. That's just messed up. And you're messed up for saying that. These aren't even the worst comments. I'm gonna get to them right now. I want to note that the reason I'm making this all anonymous is because I want to protect the people who said a lot of these things. Particularly one guy who said some of these racist comments, because, well, who knows what's gonna be done to him. I remember when this guy sent me these comments, I saw his picture on YouTube was him and his family. Looked like a perfectly normal guy, and he said, here we go. You're a in moron. 
I know nothing you're talking about. Those goddamn yellow apes got what they deserved. We should have dropped more bombs on those... I'm not gonna say this words. Not a single one of those monkeys deserves any pity, and this is all bullshit propaganda. Goddamn Jap. Should have been eradicated. It still should be. Two of those are from the same guy, and uh, I don't know what to say. Um, you're messed up and you need help. War's a terrible thing, but honestly, buddy, uh, you can't play it all against a race. And, wow, just the language is so old-timey, too. I can't believe, like, to say this in public is, uh, it's, it's interesting. Number eight, communists strike back. Weird title, I imagine. So I made uh, one episode on, it was specifically on female soldiers in the Soviet Union during World War II. The purpose of the episode was just, you know, showcase a bunch of women who were either famous snipers, uh, famous pilots, or uh, women who served at Stalingrad using the artillery. Although that is a highly debated issue and someone has commented back to me that the source I used may have been misleading. And I did hear you, sir, and you might be right. I acknowledge that. Anyways, the purpose of this episode was, you know, it was just to showcase some cool things and to show, you know, all the hardships that women had to go through. I'm just gonna give my bird a peanut, because she's screaming. And, uh, for some reason, I got a lot of weird comments from Russians, but also from what I would call Antifa members or social justice warriors in the United States who were really pro-communist and thought I was attacking them. So we're gonna go through some of these. Bodies piled up, typical baseless cliche, nothing unusual for the anti-socialist propaganda. The episode is on female soldiers, I don't even talk about this stuff. Like, I never made a political thing. Anyways, carry on. 225, what's so sinister about it? Sounds like communist imperialist propaganda. Wow, did you get that from your humanities class, boy? That's, that's cute. Wow, why so many inaccuracies? Where did you get the information? Books, all peer-reviewed. Simple as that. And more stupid American bullshit about the Eastern Front. All you Americans are full of shit with propaganda. Not only am I not American, and I, I, I'm Canadian, I say it in the video two times. Obviously you didn't watch the video, buddy. Good for you. And then the last one, this one's precious. Sorry, people, but this is very primitive anti-Russian propaganda. Deportation of Soviet Germans was necessary in such total war. Polish Jews were very benefited from Soviet possessions. Yeah, the, of course the Polish, and not just the Polish, the Polish Jews benefited from the Soviets attacking half of their country and then massively murdering them and making mass graves and then hiding it and pretending the Nazis did it all. Okay, buddy. Keep on with your Soviet Union and all that propaganda from the day. You honestly, these morons. Alright, number nine. The free helicopter ride trolls. Uh, of Mr. Augusto Pinochet. For those who've never heard of Augusto Pinochet, he was a Chilean general who led a military coup against the Marxist president of Chile at the time, Salvador Allende and um, Pinochet became a dictator of Chile as a result. It is estimated that about 3,000 people had died, 10,000 were tortured, and about 200,000 went into exile as a result of the extreme purge of socialists in Chile under Augusto Pinochet. Now, this is a bit awkward. I am not Chilean. I have no skin in this game, but a lot of people argue that Pinochet is a hero and that he saved Chile from full-on communism. Looking at the you know, looking at the situation in Venezuela right now, uh, maybe they have a point. <laughs> but the fact is the fact. Uh, the regime was brutal. Many were tortured, killed, raped, and a lot of people were disappeared. This was a lot of hardship. I mean, to, you can still see uh, these videos of these women uh, marching in the streets with pictures of their husbands, their brothers, and their sons, saying, "Where are they? It's awful. What happened?" And uh, this, uh, this also created a meme, an entire meme culture, uh, called the Free Helicopter Ride. If you've never seen it or heard the song, you can look it up on YouTube, there is a song. It's uh, rather funny and sick and twisted. Uh, needless to say, I had an episode just kind of talking about what happened. I didn't really take a stance in it, because my god, I didn't want to touch that subject. 
And uh, I got a lot of interesting comments. Comments, sorry, comments. Here we go. I'm just gonna say, Pinochet saved us from communism. That's a fact. All right. XXXX, nice argument. I'm sure you would have liked to live in a communist state, starved and jobless. Good for you. Mm, all right. And here's the precious quotes of the song. Start up the rotors, the leftist scum. Drop them in the oceans, leave no one alive. Free your country from leftist scum. It's a little dark. Okay, you want my opinion on the matter? The fact is the fact, he, co he committed politicide. Some people would argue genocide, it's a, it's a great territory. He killed a lot of people, he should not be revered. And there's a reason why he isn't revered by a lot of people, let's, let's be honest. Was that land any better? Well, people are saying yes, but even I, I, you know, choose your poison, right? Last but not least, number 10. And I'm just quoting somebody who said it like this. Why you use cinema and no footage? So this is referring to my biggest pet peeve, pet peeve, excuse me, on my YouTube channel. And that's when people simply look at your thumbnail, they don't watch your video, and then they immediately talk shit about you, pretending to know what you had in your video. I understand this day and age, you know, I see all these kind of weird social justice warrior videos and I go, oh my god, or like a Vox article for instance. Vox. And yeah, you can prejudge without watching, I mean, why would you want to watch something so cancerous? Uh, but these are awful. I, I get them all the time. Like someone sees a thumbnail and thinks I've made an entire piece about something promoting something. It's just not true. And I get it all the time. So I'm going to read a few of these. And uh, they refer to uh, something specifically that drives me nuts. Why you used Hollywood movie in make history war documentary. There are tons of World War II video. Why don't you use them as your source? He's referring to Soviet woman, the Soviet woman video I used. And he's specifically referring to using footage from Enemy at the Gates. If you've seen my videos, you would know that I use combat footage. And I used combat footage throughout that entire video. I actually had a TV on in the background that was running only World War II combat footage from the Eastern Front. And I got demonetized because of it. So you're wrong, dude. You didn't watch the video and you're an idiot. Sure, you're just a moron. I use cinematic footage when I'm in a circumstance where there simply isn't footage to cover that topic. In this one specifically, this was on blocking detachments. So in the Soviet Union, and I know some people are going to scream at me about like, whatever, I've gotten in fights over this. There was something called blocking detachments. They were used, to what extent, who knows, to shoot at their soldiers that were running away during battle. So to shoot their own soldiers who were retreating. But needless to say, there's no combat footage of this, because why would you ever show anybody in your country that? So I used Enemy at the Gates, which is a terribly inaccurate film. I have a buddy called History Clarified on YouTube. He's done an enormously large-scale, in-depth piece on this movie and why it brutally lies about things and it's straight-up propaganda. I advocate to go watch his video. It's excellent. I would never advocate for Enemy at the Gates being anything more than a super awesome film. I loved it back in the day. It's really it's fun to watch. I carry on. 300. Really? You call yourself a historian with that thumbnail? That's right there. He's talking about the thumbnail. Did I use 300 when I was talking about the Battle of Thermopylae? I used it for cinematic value. What, what would you have me use? There was a film in the 1970s and I did use a few scenes from it, but it didn't really fit so well. And let's be honest, this is a YouTube channel. A lot of the general public, they're not interested in history. They want to see cinema stuff too. So it goes out saying, historic lesson, entertainment. It's hard to mash the two. Next one, enemy at the gates is a lie. Use combat footage. I did. Half that video is actual combat footage. The other half is a few films, some of them being uh, total Russian propaganda films, mind you. And it's just hilarious. I got demonetized for using actual combat footage and these people are complaining. Yeah, so I hope you really enjoyed that. Uh, or maybe you uh, hate me and you're one of the people who commented in which Leave a comment. Let me know who you are. Because maybe I can put you on next time. Because I have a lot more in the bag. I hope people like this. I'd love to make more of these. I'd like to make more of a blog. And uh, for those of you who've actually been watching my stuff, uh, just to give you a little update, you probably noticed all this stuff around. It's like, oh wow, this is a new setup. You usually are in some dumb chair, which is, I'm still in the dumb chair, and you're usually in a living room. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to be producing a completely new uh, 
overkill on my channel. I'm going to be directing everything at the Pacific War, because that's what I specialized in history for. And soon it'll be coming up. I just need a lot more time because I've been reading, I think I'm on like 30 books right now to do this <laughs> series. Really excited. So stay tuned. This has been NBS History, soon to be the Pacific War Channel.